Hey everyone, this is Mr. A, and we're going to do another construction here. We're going to take a look at translating and then rotating the same triangle uh, and around a point. So this is really two constructions, one following the other. We looked at one of these in class today, but it's a little bit difficult to see everything on the smart board. So I wanted you to get a chance to see what it actually looks like with the real tools. So we'll need a straight edge, we'll need a protractor, that can be your straight edge, and of course our compass. So we're going to begin with the translation. Now translating along a vector is a pretty simple operation. You've got to move this whole triangle, ABC, along this vector. That means in that direction and in that amount. To do so, all we're going to do is start by taking this length of the vector and we're going to construct a parallelogram to translate it up to C. Now I'm going to go a little bit fast through this vector, uh, excuse me, through this translation. If you have any trouble following this, check out the video that has just the translation by itself. We'll go into a lot more detail. So I'm going to take this distance from the bottom of the vector up to C and I'm going to bring that to the tip of the vector. And what I've done is just create a parallelogram. So this distance and this distance are congruent. This distance and this distance are congruent, which means that point right there is going to be my C prime. Once I have C prime, I've got a foothold into this triangle now, and I'm going to want to do the same thing with B and A. Now, B and A have to follow the same vector that C did. So I'll just put my compass right back to the vector, open it up to the length of the vector, and I'll go to point B and put a little arc, and I'll go to point A and put a little arc. So I know that B prime is somewhere along there, and I know that A prime is somewhere along there. To locate them, I just need a second distance, and since I know where C prime is, I can use the distance from C in the original triangle to locate those points. So here I have from C to B. That has to be the same as from C prime to B prime, which means that right there is going to be my B prime. I can also go here and grab the distance from C to A. That has to be the same as the distance from C prime to A prime. So I bring that to C prime, and that's going to be my A prime. Now again, that was a little bit quick, and if you had any trouble following it, please just check out the other video on translating. Since we have still a rotation to do, I don't want to spend too much time, because the video will just become very long if I really dash into, hash into every detail. So we can go ahead and connect those three points, A prime, B prime, C prime. This will give us the translated triangle which, quick visual inspection, should be congruent to the original. Clearly it is. It looks really nice. So now this is the triangle that I'm going to rotate around point P. Now I'm told to rotate at 85 degrees. Remember the natural direction in the quadrants is counterclockwise. Always think about quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4 if you can't remember that, counterclockwise. I've already got a line segment set up down here so you can see it on the page. And I'm going to need to generate this 85 degree angle. So I'll take my protractor and I'll set it up so that the Remember, you've got to set that little uh, uh, crosshairs right on the end of the line segment or the point that's going to be the vertex of your angle. And I'm going to count, remember, from zero. So I'm on this lower scale here, zero up to 85 degrees. That's going to put me right there. And I'm just going to hold my pen there and go ahead and create that angle back to my line segment. Okay. So there's my 85 degree angle. So that's the angle that I'm going to want to rotate my triangle through. I'll go ahead and mark that 85 degrees so we don't forget. All right, compass time. Anytime I want to do a rotation, what is a rotation center on? No pun intended, the center of rotation, P in this case. So I'm going to start with the compass at P and choose any point in the triangle. I always like to work from sort of the inside out, so I go with the point closest. So that's C prime for me. I'm going to just adjust my compass out to that length. So that's P C prime. Somewhere along that arc, if I were to draw that arc out, that's where C double prime has to be. Right? Where exactly, I don't know, but it can't get any closer or further from the center of rotation, so it's got to live somewhere along that arc. Notice I'm not drawing out the whole circle. I'm just doing enough. I'm rotating 85 degrees. 90 would be right about there, so I just go past where I need, and then I stop. But before I change the compass using the same distance, and this is important, I'm going to transfer this down to the angle that I'm trying to duplicate. I'm going to put it right on the center there, the vertex of the angle, and copy that arc. Now I'll say that again because it's important. This arc and this arc have the same radius. In fact, to really drive that point home, we're going to connect a few dot dots and we're going to label some pieces. So if I were to put a line between C prime and P, the center of rotation, that's the beginning of the angle, and that corresponds to this piece right over here. In fact, I'm even going to actually go ahead and mark those P for the center of my rotation, there's the angle, and C prime for the end of that ray. So that point right there corresponds to C prime, that point corresponds to P, 
And what I'm trying to do here is figure out when I rotate C prime through an angle of 85 degrees, where is it going to end up? In other words, where is C double prime? Right over there. Well, again, I know C double prime has to be on that arc somewhere. All I need is a second distance. This triangle is going to give me that distance. C prime and C double prime have to be that far apart if I'm going to rotate 85 degrees. So I'm just going to take that distance and I'm going to bring my compass from C prime here to C prime there. And I'm going to use this to locate my C double prime. So right there is point C double prime. Go ahead and label that one. And I now have a foothold into this final triangle that we're going to end up with. Now, rotating, I'm going to now turn my attention to either A prime or B prime. You can do whichever one you like first. And just like every other rotation, I'm going to start at the center because point B, whatever it does, has to stay the same distance away from the center. So somewhere along this arc is going to be point B double prime. To figure out where along that arc, all I need is another distance. And I'll go ahead and use the distance from C prime to B prime because I already know where C prime is going to end up at C double prime. So if I set my compass up from C prime to B prime, that distance has to be the same as C double prime to B double prime, which means I can go ahead and draw that arc in. Now notice this one intersects twice. Now these all, all of these arcs intersect twice if you go far enough, but you won't always see it. This time you did, and actually I wanted you to, because I want to show you how to tell which point to use if you have this situation. So B prime is either going to go to that point or that point. One way to figure it out is look at the angle of rotation. So if I were to put my protractor centered at P and kind of aim it at B prime, I know it's supposed to rotate 85 degrees out, right? 85 degrees is right there, and you can see that lines up pretty well with that point. So that's one thing you could do. The other thing you could do is you could take a look at where it's located. So if I think about P C prime, this original right point from the center to C prime, notice B prime is to the left over there. If I rotate this around, so now my point, you know, PC double, double prime, B still has to be to the left. It's got to be on this side of the pen. It can't flip to that side. That wouldn't make it. So to locate A double prime, I'm going to put my compass on the center of rotation. I know A double prime has to be somewhere along that arc. So I'm just going to go ahead and arc it out. And then to find it, all I need is another distance. So I can use the distance from B or the distance from C in the original triangle. I'll go ahead and stick to C, since that was the first one we found. I always am a little partial to the original point. And I'll go ahead and take this distance from C prime to A prime. That has to be the same as the distance from C double prime to A double prime. So with the compass on C double prime, I can go down here and find my A prime. And as you can see, I didn't quite make that last arc long enough. See how they're not quite intersecting? So I'm just going to put my compass back on the center of rotation, set it up to that angle again. And I'll just extend that line a little bit, try to get it right. So right about there is going to be my A double prime. Now you may be thinking, is that the only way to find A double prime? So we have triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, and again a final visual inspection, all three of these triangles should be congruent. So that's all there is to it. There's nothing different going on here, it's just that we're doing a translation followed by a rotation. And we could of course combine any two or three or more constructions, although the construction marks will get a little bit out of hand if we do more than say two or three at the most. So if we were doing a rotation first, we'd do all this and then do the translation. So I hope that helps. Take a look at the other videos and let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.